seven. A uh, couple different approaches you can use here. Um, I think maybe the the best approach is to maybe draw a, a rough sketch of what's going on here. It says the measure of an exterior angle of a regular polygon uh, is given below. We need to know what regular means in order for us to complete this problem. Okay? If it's regular, what does that tell you about all of the interior angles? They're all the same, right? What's that tell you about all the exterior angles? They're all the same as well. Okay? That piece of information is critical because if it just said polygon, you cannot do this problem. Because if it just said just a uh, general polygon with no knowledge of its regularity, um, you, one angle could be 20 on the outside, the other angle could be 40, another angle could be 30, another angle could be 110, okay? Uh, but once it says it's regular, it tells us that every single angle on the outside is 20, okay? So I'm gonna draw you don't have to draw anything, but I, I like to provide a little bit of a sketch uh, to help me organize my thoughts. Um, and, and I know if this is a regular polygon, so, so most of you are probably comfortable saying that every regular polygon is going to somehow kind of resemble maybe like a hexagon or an octagon or something like that. It's going to somewhat look like that shape there, right? Now I could keep closing it off, but I don't know how many sides I'm going to have, so I'm not going to close it off. Does that make sense? Um, but what I do know is that if I were to extend that side, extend that side, extend that side, that side, and so forth, all the way around, however many sides I have, what I'm being told right here, if that number, if that exterior angle is 20, then that means that's 20 degrees, that means that's 20 degrees, that's 20, that's 20, that's 20, all the way around, no matter how many of those angles I have, they're all 20 on the outside, right? That's what our uh, definition of regular kind of meant to us, okay? Now, how do you relate any exterior angle with the interior angle that it is adjacent to? This 20 should be what to this angle on the inside here? Supplementary. So what does that angle on the inside have to be? Uh, 160. 160. So when it asks for that interior angle, that's how you find it. Okay. Is that doable? I have a question. Yes. If we knew it was a regular polygon, can we just subtract 20? Yes. Okay. Okay, that gives you the 160. But I was drawing the picture so you could see why we do that. Because okay. that's exactly what we did. Um, all right, so now the next question says, uh, find the number of sides. Okay. Couple different ways of doing this. I'm going to use maybe what I think to be the easiest way, and then I'll show you the alternative way. Okay. Um, the first thing to know is that if I take this exterior angle, let's see here. If I take that exterior angle there, that one there, that one there, and all of them that exist all the way around, what should they add up to? 360. Okay, we had a theorem that said all, all polygons with one exterior angle at every vertex, the, the sum of the exterior angles is always going to be 360 degrees. So we've got a bunch of 20s, right? 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus, I don't know how many, but eventually they're going to add up to 360 degrees, right? Does that make sense? So you could actually be a person that sits down and says, okay, how many times do I need to add 20 to itself to get 360? And count then how many of those 20s you put in. But if I'm taking a number and I'm adding to itself over and over and over and over again, what's a better operation instead of addition? A better operation would be what? Okay, so you so, so what, what you're getting to is the next step. Um, yeah, I'm looking for multiplication. If I got 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 X amount of times, is it, can I rewrite that as just 20 times x? Okay. Now, instead of using x, I'm going to use n. Okay. But I've got 20 n's, and that should eventually equal 360 degrees. Does everybody kind of follow that idea or that concept? Okay. Uh, another way of, of kind of viewing this is that I don't know how many of these 20's I have, but I do know that each one of them is 20. 
multiply by however many I have, and how many I have is unknown. That should give me 360, right? So in this case, can I solve for n pretty easily? Yes. So what's that going to give me? Do the zeros cancel out? Yeah. So what's 36 divided by 2? Or 18, right? So what we have there is we would, if we wanted to name this, we just call it an 18 gon. 18 hyphen gon. Okay. Um, not the only way you can do that problem. Okay. If you're a person that likes to use your formulas. We know that that is the formula for one interior angle, right? If it would have a regular polygon. We have found out in this first step that one interior angle is 160, correct? Okay. So we can set that up. I'm a person that I prefer to use that because I'm, a, I'm kind of a formula type person, okay? I like formulas because I know that they're going to give me the right answer every time if I use them appropriately, okay? Um, I'm going to multiply both sides by n. So I get... N minus 2 times 180 equals 160N. Get 180N minus 360 is equal to 160N. As you're doing more and more of these, you'll find out that every single time that you set one of these up, you will eventually on the left-hand side get 180N minus 360. Okay. Um, now if I subtract 180N from both sides, I get negative 360 is equal to negative 20N. And if they're both negative... I can really view them as both being positive, right? And is that equation right there exactly the same thing that we came up with right there? Just two different approaches, one more of a formula algebraic approach, the other one more of a logical approach uh, to get those uh, 18 sides or 18 angles. Does that help? Um, question 12 is the same thing. Uh, they just use a different number other than 20. Uh, but you're going to approach it the same exact way. So. Can you do 25? We can do 25. Can I do 26 instead of 25? I love 25. Well, that's why I want to do 26, because it's harder. Huh? You thought this one was easier? Yeah. All right, we'll do 25. You'll cry about it. All right, so we, we've, we've seen questions like this with triangles, right? If I give you the three angles of a triangle, um, either numerically or uh, algebraically with, with expressions, uh, you could add them all up and set them equal to 180, right? Well, that idea, that concept is the same here, except for now my total is what? 360, okay? So every time you see one, and this is, your homework assignment tonight is going to be like this, um, I want to add all these angles up. I know what they are. All of them are in regards to either an expression or a numerical value. So I'm going to add them all up. And set them equal to my total. Okay. Well, we know what we've talked about in the last couple of days is if you have four angles, you have a quadrilateral, then the way you find your total is to take n minus 2 times 180, right? So n being the number of sides or the number of angles, take 4 minus 2, which would be 2. 2 times 180 is 360. So I get 360, and that's my total. Okay. Now it's an equation back to like algebra 1, right? Maybe even 7th grade, 8th grade math. Okay. So we get, what, 4x, um, 10, 100. So 100. So those like terms combined give me 4x plus 100 is equal to 360. Uh, I get 4x is equal to 260. Uh, x is going to be uh, 4 goes in there, what, uh, 4 times, 5 times, 6 times. So 24, so x is 65. Okay, if we go ahead and divide that out. Um, now can I go back in and find that angle and find that angle? Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's the approach we want to do. But what I want you guys to realize, and, and you have to be, Cautious and pay attention to detail. Read your questions. Look at your pictures because this question is a quadrilateral, so the total is 360. Question number 26 is a quadrilateral, so the total is 360. 
in your homework. You might get two or three or four in a row. The total is 360. But the next one might have five sides. And now the total jumps to 540. Does that make sense? You have to be cautious on every single one of them because your total is going to be different per polygon. Yes? I know you're wrong. Because I did negative 25 plus 90. Okay. So then, if you look at 26, whether we need to do it or not, um, it's the same approach. You're just seeing now in the last one, uh, some of the angle measurements were uh, numerical. Here, they're all algebraic. You simply still just add all the x's together, add all your constants together, set this thing equal to 360, uh, and you can move forward. Out. That's something we can do. Okay. Just be very cautious because I, I get this all the time. When I set test for a quiz, I do it on purpose. One question will be a okay, quadrilateral, the next one will be a hexagon, the next one will be a octagon. And I get people consistently to use 360 all the way through all of them. Or they use 180 all the way through all of them. Make sure you know that they change um, as the, the shape gets bigger and bigger in regards to the number of sides. Anything else?